Hey, I'm Kendra Winchester. Welcome back to my channel. And today we are going to be talking about audiobooks. But first, I do need to let you know that there is a guy walking outside my window. I'm on the second floor, by the way. And uh, he is, as a leaf blower, I think he's cleaning the gutters. And so Dylan thinks that we're being attacked by aliens. So he's barking. And uh, just so, there are going to be mechanical noises, dog barking, all throughout this video. So just prepare yourselves. <laughs> But we're going to be talking about audiobooks because a couple months ago I did a video on why audiobooks are in fact reading and my relationship with audiobooks and just uh, how I consider them invaluable because I have chronic daily headaches and migraines and amongst a myriad of other health issues. So audiobooks are incredibly, incredibly important to me and I could not read probably half the things that I do without audiobooks and I could not, yeah. I'm just gonna stop now. If you want all the background information on that, definitely go check out that video. I will link it up uh, in the link above my head as well as the description down in the description box. I don't know what this is called. I keep wanting to call it show notes, but it's not. I just spend too much time in podcasting. I sit down to film. I have to like switch the language I use. It's confusing. Anyway, so we're gonna talk about audiobooks. The number one question I got in the comments of that video was, where do I start with audiobooks? Or I've tried audiobooks and it just hasn't worked for me. Is there anything else that I could try? So yes, I have answers to all of these questions and that is what this video is for. So I think the number one thing as we move forward to remember with audiobooks is to give yourself some slack. Not everything that works for another person is gonna work for you. You might read 75 books in a year and in print or ebook or whatever, but then you might not have as high listening comprehension just because you have not practiced it as much. So, and also depends if you're a visual learner or an audio learner and just all of these myriad of different factors in your life that could just change your experience with audiobooks. So I think it's very important to find something that works for you that's fun. We wanna make sure that we have positive experiences with audiobooks and that it's something enjoyable and not a chore because I think if it starts out as a chore then it's just not ever really going to work that way because you're going to like dread it and then you'll have like this association thing and yeah. So let's start with something fun. So I, a few years ago, I had a group of grad school friends and I was like, audiobooks, audiobooks, audiobooks. And they're like, what? And I was like, yes. <laughs> Summary of that story right there. And I was, I told them you should try the Harry Potter audiobooks and they did and they fell in love. And it was great to see so many of my friends reading Harry Potter at the same time, especially considering Jim Dale is one of the most best narrators in all of the universe. And it was interesting to see as they move through, a lot of them would re listen to them on commutes. Uh, my friend Autumn, you know, pretty much crafted all of her wedding decorations while listening to the Harry Potter audiobooks. And I think they're just a great tool to use. So what books would be helpful to start with? Well, I have found that obviously Harry Potter, one of the number one things, uh, if you've already read Harry Potter, it also might be helpful because then if your mind wanders, you come back to the story, you already know what's happening and it's not, you know, a big of a deal. So another recommendation would be the Percy Jackson series. And I love how, you know, Percy Jackson is in first person and they find these really young sounding guy narrators that sound like teenagers. I know they're adults. <laughs> I've looked up some of their photos because I'm like, did they hire a teenager? And no, like it's just a dude that sounds like a teenager. And I really enjoy them. I think they're really well done. There's a strong narrative voice, which is important, I think, uh, for an awesome audiobook. So that is definitely something that I would recommend. So another one on that level that I would recommend is Libba Bray's A Great and Terrible Beauty trilogy. You could also check out her series, The Diviners, but I'm not as fond of that narrator as I am this one. I just think this whole like British, like mysterious castle in the middle of nowhere, like trope thing is just perfect for this. There's also a lot of fantasy elements in this and I just love this trilogy and I actually own these and I listen to them over and over. And I think, I think they're magnificent. They're like all these mysteries and there's a magical world that she ends up going into and I can't really say anything else, but it was one of my favorite books as a teenager and I still listen to it over and over. Normally I don't recommend books where the protagonist is a woman and the narrator is a guy. Normally like this, that just doesn't work. But Tim Curry narrates the Alberson, the original Alberson trilogy. I love this audiobook. Like I, I can't get enough of it, but he just does a magnificent job and Mogget is my favorite character out of like the whole series and the Mogget voice is, will always be the Tim Curry Mogget voice because he does such a great job. He's such a great like voice actor, especially. I, I love him. So I would definitely recommend these. 
you aren't really into just single narration, you could also try full cast audio books. So as a kid, I listened to a lot of dramatizations of classic novels. So Christmas Carol, Little Women, and it was just like a radio show, you know, and that's kind of the idea behind this only it's an unabridged audiobook. So you're still listening to the original text and you're not missing anything. So for example, with this one, The Golden Compass, Philip Pullman is the main narrator. And then when there's dialogue, a voice actor is that character. So Lyra is the same, you know, actor throughout the entire series. It's I love it. I think it's magnificent. And I listened to this over and over and I made the mistake of finishing this series for the second time while I was working and I was like crying while listening to it at the very end and my supervisor was like, are you okay? Why are you crying? <laughs> and uh, that was not, that was not a good life choice, but it is really moving and the voice actors are fantastic. Uh, the same company that does this, which is Full Cast Audio, does uh, a lot of Tamara Pierce's books. I have this one, you know, I'm holding up this one, but she, they do most of her books. I really love them and I think they did a great job. I would say my favorite audiobooks from Tamara Pierce's would be The Circle Quartet and The Circle Opens Quartet because I don't know. I just think the voice actors especially were really great in that. And that's actually a middle, her middle reader series. So if you want to check that out, you can see that and that might ease your way into it. Or maybe you haven't read all of Tamara Pierce. This would be an, a great way to get into her books as well. So you might be noticing I'm recommending a bunch of fantasy books to you, and that's because that's my favorite genre. And I would highly recommend starting with some of your favorite genre fiction as well. Because to me, like when I want to relax or when I'm sick or distressed or whatever, I reach for fantasy and it's like a warm blanket wrapped around my so shoulders. And I think just making it that much easier for yourself to get into audiobooks is very helpful. So I would definitely recommend that. Now, if you're like, now Kendra, I actually, I just really want to start with adult fiction. Are there any great narrators or books that you think I might get into? Yes. Yes, I have books for you. So first up, I would recommend Behold the Dreamers by Mbolo Mbue, the narrator of this. He is magnificent and I just really, really love just his narration. So I am pretty sure that I gave this book an extra star because the narration was just so amazing, but whatever the case may be, it was just a fantastic story that he told very well and I just love it to pieces. And yeah, so I will put his name down in the description box down below because I can't remember off the top of my head, but he is a fantastic narrator and you can actually go on different platforms and search his name and I would probably just listen to whatever he narrated because I love him. Another one I would recommend is The Widows of Malabar Hill by Sujata Massey. The narrator of that audiobook is phenomenal. I read it recently and I just sat there and I listened to the whole thing in like, I don't know, two days because she does a great job. But because they found a narrator that is the same heritage as you know, the protagonist of the book, it just really makes that more authentic. It's like The Roundhouse by Louise Erdrich. It's about a Native American family living on a reservation and something happens to the mom and there's a complication between, you know, reservation law and, you know, United States law and some conflict there. And that audiobook is narrated by an indigenous man. And I think that he did an amazing job. I just think having that authenticity of that type of narration just makes it that much better because you are getting more of the experience with that audiobook. So the last recommendation I have for you is pretty much anything by Neil Gaiman. And here's the reason, because his narration is amazing. He is one of the authors that I will only listen to in audio because when he reads the audiobook, it just adds so much more to the book. I really love The Ocean at the End of the Lane. It's one of my favorite books of his, probably my the favorite book of his, but he will also do full cast audio. So he's done that for American Gods and I believe the Graveyard book. And he just is very aware of how important audiobooks are to readers and listeners. And I just love him to pieces because of that. So I would highly recommend just about like anything that he narrates because he does an amazing, amazing job. Now I've been recommending fiction as well for the most part, because that's how I got into audiobooks. But some people prefer to listen to nonfiction on audio. So if you've only been trying fiction and it hasn't worked for you, maybe nonfiction would be a, a great way to go. I, I really love Mary Roach's books. She wrote Grunt and Bonk and a stiff, which is basically these pop science books, which are really cool. I also really like listening to nonfiction essays or memoirs that are narrated by the author. So like Sachi Cole's uh, One Day We'll All Be Dead and None of This Will Matter or Samantha Irby's uh, We Are Never Meeting in Real Life. Because I think, especially a lot of times with humor books, if you're reading it on the page and you, you might not connect with their humor very well at all, because it's just not, the tone isn't there. But listening to them on audio, you get the humor, you get the delivery, you get everything. And I think it's just, 
I just, I just love it so much. I really love Jenny Lawson on audio. I'm not sure I really would have enjoyed the books as much in print, but hearing her just tell the stories of her life uh, from Let's Pretend This Never Happened and Furiously Happy, just, I just laugh so hard. And there's some outtakes on the audiobook of her just going off and just, just rambling on about who knows what, and it's just, it's really funny. I, I love it so so much. So definitely keep an eye out for books like that and you can do a little experimentation with just your reading preferences, your listening preferences, whatever the case may be. If there is a particular book that you're looking for, just ask me in the comments and I'm happy to recommend all of the audiobooks. Like, I am here for you. The last thing that you may be asking is where on earth can I find all of these audiobooks? Aren't audiobooks expensive? Yes! Yes, audiobooks are very expensive. I would highly recommend the library. That would be the first stop shopping for me. So you have at the library, you might have Overdrive, Hoopla, uh, RB Digital, possibly some other smaller companies, but those are probably be the top ones that you find. And I use all of them. I think they're great. With Overdrive, you might have some long waits for holds, but on Hoopla, you have a limited amount of checkouts per month, so there are no wait lists, and they have a great selection of audiobooks. So definitely check out your library. If you want to pay for a subscription, you can do Audible, which is where you're actually buying the digital rights to the book, and you keep them even after you've quit your subscription. Or you could do a streaming service like Scribd, which is what I have, where you just stream the book and you don't keep anything, but you have unlimited listens, at least at this point. Hopefully it'll stay that way. Also, Playster is a little higher on the price point. Uh, Scribd is like $8.99 a month, and uh, Playster is 30 but I don't think it has like the invisible limitations that Scribd has. So it just really depends on your budget and what your preferences are. All of these subscriptions have trials so you can check them out before you actually start paying for them, which is really great. And I have tried all of them and I would probably say because I listen to so many, I prefer Scribd, but when I want to re-listen to one, so like Harry Potter, Libra Bray, that kind of thing, I get them on Audible because then I'm only paying once for that audiobook and I can just keep them even though I don't have an Audible subscription anymore, which is great. And that's just something that I really like about Audible. So it just depends on what your plans for your audiobooks are as well. So there are a lot of other audiobooks that I could recommend to you today, but I just don't have the time. <laughs> I've already been here a very long time. So I am going to stop now, and if you have any particular questions or looking for recommendations, either subscriptions or particular audiobooks, if you have any solutions to some problems regarding your audio listening that you're looking for, definitely let me know down in the comments, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. So I just love audiobooks, and I want to share that with you. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.